Joan Jennings. I'm the chair of the Public Art Committee. It's Wednesday, October 13th, 2021 at 2 p.m. and I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, Marissa, would you call the roll, please? Yes. Ms. Jennings? Here. Ms. Gregory? Here. Mr. Meals? Here. Ms. Robinson? Here. Mr. Sallow? Here. Mr. Stackhouse? Here. Ms. Hennessy? Present. Um, I just wanted to um, inform everybody that uh, Diane received an email from Mr. Stackhouse uh, saying that uh, he will be going on this fabulous adventure and uh, will miss the November and December meetings, so he has an excused absence. And uh, we wish you well, and maybe at the end of the meeting you could fill us in on some details. All right. Okay, great. Uh, we have a guest today, uh, sculptor Mike Elwell, who'll be making a presentation to us. Um, has every, everybody had a chance to read the minutes? Are there any comments, changes? I'd like to entertain a mo motion to accept as submitted. Bill, second. Second. Trish. Uh, minutes of September 8th, 2021, accepted as submitted. Um, as a courtesy to Mr. Elwell, we're going to move him up in the agenda. Uh, he's one of our, uh, he's a sculptor with a uh, proposal for us. He sent us some materials which are in our backup. So Mr. Elwell, if you would like to come to the podium and Right. I'd also like to note that uh, Mr. Elwell has filled out the um, public art proposal for, um, you know, with all with all the details of, uh, you know, his idea for the pack. Mr. Elwell, please. All right. Well, my journey as a uh, sculptor was kind of, how would I put it, uh, long and extended. Um, very briefly, I have not had any art background whatsoever. I uh, have a law degree, but that didn't uh, help in any way as far as the art. But I had a friend that had Parkinson's, and he was a woodcarver. And he was a close friend, and at one point his Parkinson's overtook him, and he could no longer complete his wood carvings. And so I said, Duke, why don't we make molds of some of your pieces and see if we can't cast them in bronze and that way you can market them. And he said, well, okay, but how do we do this? And I said, I don't know. I'm at the University of Kansas and I can go up and ask questions and long and short, I built a small foundry back in the 70s. And I blew it up a few times, but <laughs> gradually I learned a little bit more not to blow it up. Mm -hmm. And so I started casting his work. Well, gradually, people kind of filtered in and said, well, would you cast something of mine? This went on. So I had an art casting foundry for almost 45 years. Oh, wow. At one point, I had eight employees, and it just, it just grew. And pretty soon, I found myself doing so much touch-up work on waxes that people would bring to have cast after a while, I thought, God, you know, I think I could do some of these things because I'm kind of looking at some of the heads that were brought in and thinking, you know, that eyeball probably doesn't look real good in the middle of the forehead. <laughs> we might, we might want to drop it down a little and nose, you know. So touching up all these things, it's amazing what you can learn. Mm -hmm. And gradually, since I had the foundry, I've been really more interested in whimsical things things that make people smile and laugh. Mm -hmm. And with the foundry, I could kind of indulge myself because I had a full-time job and I didn't have to make a living at it. So I really didn't much care if they didn't sell, which at this point in my life, I'm beginning to think, I wish some of them had sold because I don't know what <laughs> the heck I'm gonna do with them. <laughs> uh, so long and short, I, I accumulated a lot of my own work other work by other artists, 
I did the Loveland show for years. Uh, pretty much one of the original artists there, maybe in the first two years, that you may not be acquainted with that, but it, it became the largest sculpture show in the world. Uh, it's huge. And anyway, that being uh, kind of an entree, I went down, I had a divorce and decided I was gonna move to St. Pete, and that was about 12, 13 years ago. But I had all this collection of artwork that I drugged down to St. Pete with me and put in my studio. And so I thought, what am I gonna do with this? So I thought, well, I'll go down to Beach Drive and see, see who's interested. And the Red Cloud Gallery, Indian Gallery, that's been there about 28 years, run by Harriet and Steve. And I said, look, I've got this bench piece. Would you be interested in displaying it? And Harriet kind of said, well, I don't know. What does it look like? And so I showed her a picture. And he said, well, yeah, yeah, we'll put that outside. So I did that. And then about, oh, I don't know, months later, a fellow that owned Waters Jewelry says, well, do you have any more of those? I'd like one in front of my business. Well, that grew. Eventually, I had five pieces there in one block of Beach <laughs> Drive. And somehow in this process, I apparently got crosswise of the Arts Commission because I had just gone to the owners of the business and <laughs> said, would you like one of these without any official approval, what have you? And, uh, but they were all on private property. They all fit within a little alcove in front mm -hmm. of the storefront. So I wasn't on the public sidewalk. And it's been, been a blessing and a handicap at the same time because in terms of popularity, these are really popular pieces with the people. Uh, pictures, pictures going all over the world, mm -hmm. and particularly the fact that they're kind of interactive. They're designed to have somebody sit, get the kid's picture, and then they forward them. I mean, it's funny, I was on uh, Match.com, and it was interesting how many women had pictures on my benches, <laughs> and he can say, I can introduce you to the artist. <laughs> anyway, that, the, the casting book that you have kind of shows you a little bit about when you're comparing sculptures and outdoor pieces and safety, uh, maintenance. There are a lot of things to take into account. And what I was mentioning is, pieces have been there almost 10 years and they've never been vandalized which not the same thing as saying they don't get old and tired looking because with so many people handling and sitting probably every it's a rule of thumb I think about every if they're on a public spot maybe every six to seven years it's good if they can be clean and don't need to do a full patina mm -hmm. but a re-patina new you know lacquers and you know, see how it uh, it looks. And most of them can be brought back, so they're almost just brand new. Mm -hmm. If you want to start the whole process, you have to strip it down. But uh, so that being said, I, I think in a, in a, if there was a vote taken in St. Petersburg, I think some of these would be at the very top of the public. They just like them, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they're very popular. The, the fact that they're kind of whimsical, the pelican, just as an example, has on a, a Florida shirt with pink flamingos. <laughs> so now we have the pelican wearing, and then flip flops. Mm -hmm. uh, the, have to get rid of that Tampa Bay, though. Well, yeah, that, <laughs> that can be. The try. Yeah, yeah, well, I wish they'd done better. Oh, well. <laughs> God, they had their chances. Right. Oh, well, another worse story. <laughs> but uh, the hat. All it has, the only thing is, there's this TB, which is Tampa Bay right. logo on the hat. That can be taken off, and you can put anything you wanted on the hat mm -hmm. uh, within reason. Right. I mean, I can't do 12 right, pages right. of text. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, the, the pieces are uh, available. This is the one that I was kind of pointed to to mm -hmm. suggest, and... Uh, if you have any questions, I'm, they probably, this weighs maybe 500, 600 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's not like somebody can pull up in the middle of the night and run off with it. Right. Um, and like I say, they've never been vandalized. At one point, I kind of chained them down, and then I gave up on it. Nobody, 
They, you know, they just they just sit there yeah. and nobody messes with them. Mm. Uh, well, personally, I I love the idea and I love the the whimsical pelican mm -hmm. for you know selfie opportunities. Um, we had a proposal a number of years ago for a concept similar to this, and the artist vanished. So we even have a place for it, right, Diane? <laughs> <laughs> we have a home for them already. Can I see the sure. the, the actual piece? Oh, sorry. They look like you're doing pretty good. And you, and you have the, the others for sale as well, right? I do. Correct. I do. I kind of got They're tired in your of the, hand out. No offense, but with the city of St. Pete, since I had circumvented apparently the Arts Commission, I was persona non grata. <laughs> and I never could undo that. Uh, it was just, well, you didn't ask for our permission. So oh. it's been proposed to the city a couple of times. I get a lot of, gosh, we love them, but if we buy them, we will have to put them in a public place since they're on private property right now. Mm. And they said, we like them where they are, mm -hmm. and we get them for free. So we aren't going to do anything. Right. And with this stroke, I kind of got to thinking, you know, maybe it's time to, for me to be a little more proactive and see, <laughs> see if they could find a home. Um, well, I think we're a lot more benevolent in Tarpon Springs. <laughs> well, well, I think also that the TB could actually be changed to TS. TS, yes, right. Very exactly. easily. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's just a high polish. In other words, the letters are mm -hmm. uh, on there, and right. it'd be very easy to, to do that, apply mm -hmm. them, and then polish those <laughs> I back. Love it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love the pelican, and I love the uh, seahorse bench. Lucienne, any comments? They're delightful, all of them. Yeah. Um, as I said, I, my concern really has nothing to do with the merits of this proposal. I'm looking at the various projects we have right. in front of us, and I feel like I'm sort of in the middle of a kaleidoscope and can't quite focus the pattern yet. Mm -hmm. um, I know we're facing a big budget item with the Black Heritage Project. Right. Diane has suggested a water sculpture that we're exploring, mm. which will be another major, major right. budget item. So I'm, um, I'm feeling a little nervous about um, accepting projects on a case-by-case -case basis right. at this point in time. Right. Um, uh, has I nothing to do with the appeal of these. They're... <coughs> Yeah, I'd like to remind everybody, since it's over our fifteen thousand dollar threshold, that we'd have to get final approval from the board of commissioners. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, just wanted to remind you about that. That's one of the things in our ordinance. Bill, how do you feel? What was our budget on the pelican that we were looking for? I think it was about. He gave them to us. Eighteen. Yeah, that's that what was I was like thinking. Five 50, years ago. Yeah, fifteen to twenty yeah. is, is what. So this isn't. That far out of that, right. out of that. Yeah, I, I think it's delightful. I think it's it's one of the. I like the whimsical nature of it. Exactly. I, I think it takes yep. us in a in a different direction than what the mm -hmm. historical pattern that we've we've kind of been in. Right. So I, I think it looks great. I do share some of the concerns. You know, just to make sure that right. we, we are budgeting things properly. Uh, right. With the I, yeah. That I think. We're it, going. Right. I think it will take some. You know, delving into the budget, but uh, I just want to get everybody's feel about whether we should <laughs> delve. So, you. Yeah, I I think okay. we should I try to figure out what we're what direction we're right. going and, right. and what things are possible. Okay, Trish. I love it. <clears throat> I love it. I'd like to do it. Okay, so you want to delve, it? David? <laughs> yeah. I second that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Robert. I think I think the price and concerns with with all the other projects we have really does eat into it. Uh, if you were going to donate it, <laughs> we're, just think of us as a shop. <laughs> on, on <laughs> drive, and, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll uh, <coughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm still a little concerned about that this is yet, this is a big, big bunch of money mm -hmm. coming out of uh, our little bit of a budget. Right. Uh, so I'm concerned about that. Right. Debbie? Um, I like it, but I'm. I would also be concerned about our uh, financial mm -hmm. bottom line. Um, but I would like to explore the possibility. Okay, 
So, Mr. Elwell, I think if it's okay with you, I think we're going to just work with uh, Marissa and take a look at our budget and see what we could do. And then, as I said, you know, it seems like everybody's in favor of it. And then we'd have to bring it before the uh, Tarpon Springs Board of Commissioners. All right. Uh, did did yeah, you um, did you decide on which one you're interested in? Is it definitely the Pelican, or are you entertaining anything else? I think the Pelican. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Suzanne, if we were to do one, would it be the Pelican? No objection. Okay. So I'll yep. Yeah, I'm for the Pelican. Yes. All the way around. Pelican. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, well, thank you for bringing this to us. They're really wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you. And me. hopefully we'll have good news for you. Does anybody have the... Yeah. Should we pass it down? Yeah. One piece of art. I love it. <clears throat> I do too. Yeah. I like that bit of the new thing. So Mr. Elwell will be in touch? Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Thank you so much. much. I, I, mean, I looked at it and immediately I, I, I smiled. Right, exactly. I said, I said this is what we need. this piece at a foundry today's prices, I don't think you can get a cast for less than about twenty three, twenty four thousand dollars $24,000. That's just mm -hmm. the casting. That's not the mold. Mm -hmm. That's not finished. That's not welded together. By the time you cast and blast, and then you start <laughs> in with the real work, which is welding it together, mm -hmm. chasing the patina, mm -hmm. I think that's about where you'd be. Mm. Yeah. So, no, it's, it's a, great. right, it's a great price. It's a great piece. I think we just have to Squeeze it into the budget somehow. Sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, we're back to the agenda. We're on old business. Um, the Girl Scout troop, storm drains. D Diane, do you want to bring us up to speed on that? Um, they are close to uh, starting um, the project. Um, they've got two storm drains. They're going to be doing... Um, and uh, they're going to give us uh, their list of, uh, thank you, um, list of supplies shortly. So they're definitely moving forward and uh, should be done before the holidays. So, Yeah, I have to say that uh, Diane got an um, email that just continues their track record of being professional. <laughs> I still want to elect them to Congress. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. So okay, so forward. that's that's in the hopper. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Tarpon Springs High School mural project at Sunset Beach update. Um, we got an email from Lisa Fatalitis, the um, high school principal, that this year students were not interested in pursuing the project. Mm. Uh, she suggested I email two of the art teachers, uh, which I did yesterday. I got a result from a Miss Marmo. Yeah, Marmellas, <laughs> and um, uh, I, again, she said that they don't seem to be interested. So uh, I I suggested that. Uh, oh, and I did get an email from um, you know Police Chief Young, um, saying that he really wants to keep this alive, and uh, maybe we'll bring it up again in the spring, and see whether you know we could get them to come up with some sketches, mm. and. Uh, you know, uh, I guess they want us to hold that uh, that space for them. Hmm. Yes, Robert. Does this have to be um, uh, a Tarpon Springs school, or could it be a county school? I was going to ask. I well, we, we've already started working with Tarpon Springs High. Yeah. Um, what about Eastlake? Well, I yeah, I was I was uh, thinking of the Pinellas County uh, mm -hmm. Cultural and Culture and the Arts the PCCA. Mm -hmm down in Gibbs, but they're made up of yeah. county students. Mm -hmm. you right. know, and it's, it's, a magnet, it's a magnet art school, so you ought to get some really interesting things right. from them. Uh, maybe, we could, maybe we could do another project with them mm -hmm. if you want to look into it. I think that's a great idea because we have a lot of different opportunities. But it seems like they, they sort of staked a claim to that one particular wall on Sunset mm -hmm. Beach. I think politically it might be dicey to go off the reservation on that one. I guess so, but if they don't want it, <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. I, I, I feel like Solomon here holding the baby up by its legs. I don't know what to what to do with it, but... Uh, did they give a reason, or was it just, did they um, not have enough time or another project? Um, they did cite in the email that um, a lot of the students didn't have transportation after school to stay afterwards, you know, to, to work on the project, and some of them had jobs. 
Mm. But they and so, but there is the weekend. So that is true. I don't know. That was what was told to me. So. Bill. Oh, potentially maybe look at the middle school too. Reach out to the art. You know teachers in the middle school and see if there's any interest in, in that group. Maybe we have to dive down a little bit further. Or St. Pete College Art students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do a contest with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there any way to reach out? It was Officer Young, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Police Chief Young. Police Chief Young. Could we reach out to him and see what he suggests since it was his idea or... Well, he was in the meeting with me when we originally went to the school, oh gosh, a couple of weeks ago, and we met with the students, and it was just an initial gathering to kind of tell them about the project and everything, and uh, so then we left it at that, that they would convene and come up with some drawings, you know, uh, and then present them to the Public Art Committee, and uh, so I followed up with them, you know, and... Uh, that's the responses that I got is that nothing has come to pass. So not really sure what to do now. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he could get them excited about doing, you know, every Saturday or something like that. Well, he was there like... and he couldn't get much of a rise out of them. So right. <laughs> I don't know. David, would you have the time to maybe go over to the high school and talk to a couple of the art teachers? Do a pep rally over there? <laughs> <laughs> shake a rattlesnake or something? <laughs> <laughs> pep rally. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I, I think you're uh, closer in age to those kids. Yeah. You might resonate with I them. I'm going to need some gifts and some right, right. Starbucks cards there and you stuff go. like that. You know? yeah, yeah. I might be able to get them up. Uh, I think the teenage girls would probably rally around uh, yeah. listening to you. Possibly, maybe. Mm. Maybe. Okay. All right. While you're back up, Dave, Sports Field Mural Project, Bill and David. Well, I think everybody can look in their packets and see some of the, uh, the work that uh, Joan produced and, and, and David as well. David's is far superior, so <laughs> ignore mine, please. Not too much further. <laughs> I, I, I guess looking for any comments and uh, feedback based on those. Um, can I? Can I speak? I, sure. I think whoever did this did a very good job. Uh, the, uh, especially, you know, the, the the presentation is very interesting. I think a lot of it, though, we, we, this really comes under the title of uh, art mural, mm -hmm. whereas the ones that are just colored, you can see the, the red one and the yellow one and the red one and the blue one and things like that, that doesn't require an artist. Mm -hmm. You know that that's the thing about it, and yet it still it, it still resonates, and that's the the point I've been having about this all along is that um, it's it's taking something that the city could do. I mean, they could maintain it. I mean, the, one of the things about bright colors outdoors in Florida is it's sort of they're they're almost not compatible. If anybody's mm -hmm. tried to to paint a house bright colors, yeah. It gets yeah. dingy pretty quick. Yeah, so so they do need to get repainted, but that's a good thing in a way, in that they don't fall in disrepair, mm -hmm. like buildings like this tend to do. They get painted once every ten years, maybe, and they get painted that dull white or something. They get they get beige. Yeah, beige. <laughs> yeah. They get the the north side goes green, whether you want it to or not, or or whatever it is. <coughs> yeah. So. Um, I, you know, I, I think it's interesting to see how they're broken up into um, uh, patterns and things like that. That's pretty time consuming mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to do that because what what make what will make this work? If you just slap the paint on, it's going to look horrible. Mm -hmm. But if you paint it well, it'll look really great mm -hmm. and, and use quality paint. And you you know you you give it maybe one or two coats so that it has a sense of, of body to it. Uh, the, the ones with the design, um, that is very difficult. I mean, that requires a lot of tape, mm -hmm. and these structures have texture, and they're in the tape in the world. That frog tape doesn't do it either. It will seep underneath it, and then you'll have more of a mess, because you won't be able to do that. The way, the technique you do for making a hard edge between two different colors 
is you put the tape down, you take a clear acrylic, and you seal it from the edge. Mm -hmm. All of that would be sealed. And then, uh, then when you take it off, you have a little hard edge there. You, that's the way you can do it. Now, that's very time consuming, right? But just going from corner to corner, <coughs> it, uh, you know, I, I think it, it, it's something that, that the city painters could do. And I'm, I'm hoping they take enough care of their crafts to, to do it well instead of just throwing it on there, which I doubt they would do anyway. But uh, um, so, you know, I, th I think these, these visualize uh, thoughts, you know, about, about how they work just solid color. Mm -hmm. Now, you could hire an artist to do something on that once it's done that way. Right, but the, the whole purpose of this was to use students. Well, then, then you're going to have a lot of supervision, you know, because mm -hmm. um, th that part I missed. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't I, didn't, I, I didn't know you were going to use students on this. Well, the other thing is it's not really, it, we're not looking to give public works additional work over and above what they already have to do. But so that, that, that's not what the public art committee is yeah. Really but supposed but to don't do. they want to paint those buildings? Sure, they do. Yeah. Okay. But it's it's a suggestion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not as, a project so much as yeah. a, as I think a suggestion. Um, to anyway. Yeah. Well, this was this was meant to be an extension of what we did at Sisler Field. Mm -hmm. You know, using you know a young artist. You know <laughs> to uh, you know to come up with a concept. And you know, either paint it or have other you know students or young artists paint it. You know, it. I, I, I would strongly urge against that if, if we're going to do patterns of gold color. Mm -hmm. um, it seems easy, but it's not. Mm -hmm. So the sharp uh, patterns were basically it was just easier for me to throw them yeah. up there instead yeah. of drawing a mural. Sure. Obviously, you probably want to do more rounded lines. Have you or, thought about doing any of these? <laughs> no, no. Me personally, I could do it, but I'm not going to do it. But, uh, but yes, I do see it. When you have a texture on a wall, it is very difficult to get those crisp lines. Mm -hmm. But you could do a circular mural or something like that. But geometry to act actually bring in the primary color as well. Because when you see them to where they hit together, they almost... It's close to clashing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, that's it's like music, right? Yeah, but this in its sound, this right. right? But in this, you know, I'm able to make that line precise. Yeah, the corner will do it for you, right? Mm -hmm. And when we see this in reality, it probably isn't going to look that crisp unless mm -hmm. we get a professional painter. Well, it'll look crisp as crisp as the structure. I mean, just look at the corner of that column right there. Mm -hmm. Right, that's, that's what you're going to see. Now the building's liable to have cracks in it and holes in it and all sorts of stuff too right. so so it, um, it's it was a way of dealing with something that doesn't require budgeting out of our budget and dealing with the Sisler field and and the other things to where there was a, a commonality in a lot of the athletic fields and whether uh, whether a city would want to get behind that or not I've seen cities where they have they have gotten behind these kinds of projects but uh, um. You all can propose it if you want to. It's up to you. Yeah. Was yeah. I haven't heard everything that's passed between you two masked marbles. Of <laughs> 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 but, Sorry. Um, I, I, where does Mr. Tom Function fall on this? Well, no, I was just saying that it just seems like, you know, in. And correct me if I'm wrong, but the public art committee is tasked to, you know, create public art. You know, if we're talking about painting walls, that's something that is, you know, we could make that suggestion that, you know, w wouldn't it be neat if, you know, the next time that you paint some of these buildings, you know, you do one of these colors and then that it would identify it and then they could take that in consideration and... I don't know. Mark LaCourse would have to probably sign off on it, or the I don't know if it would go to the Board of Commissioners. I don't know. Has he been 
involved in this at all? No, because you all need to vote on what mm -hmm. direction you want to go in. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just, you know, it's like, but in my opinion, knowing our departments and, you know, how shorthanded everybody is and, you know, it's like, I, you know, I'm not sure that they need another, you know, task because, um, you know, what they do is, uh, Tom Function told me that they have it in a rotation with the buildings when they paint them. They have, you know, it's like, okay, we did this one this year. And so every year they, you know, have an agenda of when they're going to paint different buildings within the city. And as you know, the city owns a lot of buildings. Mm -hmm. So for those maintenance type things, you know, they'll just go in and, you know, get it done. So I don't know. You know, it's like you can request so it. I'm not sure if it's going to. It's conceivable that when one of these buildings came up, it could be painted in if primary colors. I would think so if that's, you know, what you're recommending, and then it would have to get approved. But just to go out and say, okay, we want you to go ahead and do all these buildings at all the fields, like by March or something like that. I, don't, I think we don't, all... Yeah. Realize yeah. there is a reality of time and budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Question: mm -hmm. Was the building in Sisler Park was that prepped by the city before the artist? No, the artist prepped it. The artist prepped it. Okay. Bill. Yeah, just you know, when I look at these, uh, you know, I understand the primary colors, and I think it's a really kind of, kind of neat idea. When I think of our, our audience with the kids at the sports complex, I really like one, two, three, because it, it you know, mm -hmm. you can identify whatever activities to put taking place there, mm -hmm. but we still have that uniformity of a pattern that we're doing across all the sports complexes. And, you know, I think you can get those primary colors intermingled with that. So I, I really like the, 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 top three as as far as the fact that we're at sports complexes and we're we're dealing with young people and I think we can get you know a basketball soccer ball football mm -hmm. you know those mm -hmm. things intertwined and, and so there's a relationship between what's going on at that particular field and also keeping it uniform and, and having some sort of an artistic uh, appearance just just the thought right I'm I'm in Bill's camp but uh, Trish okay. yeah yeah I like that idea too. Okay, it's the one, two, three. Looks sim yeah. Um, it's a little more simple. And, yeah. Oh. David? Well, these are just to kind of show, you know, not <coughs> painting the entire wall, but putting some type of Design. art on it and right. then mm -hmm. keeping the, the, the buildings as we know them mm -hmm. right. and then bringing to attention the sports that are being played. So it's not exactly <coughs> this is, is what I'm envisioning. Right, but the concept yeah. is right. there. Yeah, yeah. Just the it's idea just that. Simple. Yeah. yeah, right. Now, personally, having the two colors hit, I mean, I like primary colors, love primary colors. I think it's too much color because it, it creates almost like, not necessarily, I hate to use the word eyesore, but you're drawn to that instead of the sports. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you're talking about you're talking about the um, doing the walls in the primary colors. Correct. Right. Like yeah, fully. Like, other, like yeah. fully. Yeah. But then when you put the geometry in it, it kind of breaks it up just a little bit and then you can bring it to wrap around right. to the other side. Mm -hmm. And that was how I found to where it wasn't too eye catching. Right. In a sense. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, I was talking to Mark, and in addition to what Diane said about the, you know, asking city departments to, you know, help with the, you know, the buildings, uh, the sports leagues also have to approve this. So, oh. yeah. you know, because I mean that's where their teams play. So I think one, two, and three would probably be more palatable, you know, to them, you know, using. Um, <laughs> You know, you know, like a stencil or some representation of balls, helmets, some element of the sport that's played on the team. So, um, anyway, Debbie. But again, not easy with your straight lines. Right. And that has a lot to do with straight lines. Personally, I really don't. Um, um, I know that we're dealing with kids and sports, and but. 
I would actually like to see the building in some sort of a like a floral concept or or painted some sort of some sort of green with palm fronds on it or something mm. other than everything in in primary colors and I do agree with you that they conflict mm -hmm. and it it doesn't it's it's not a good look for me the way that colors conflict one two and three I think are I are I appreciate more but again you're talking about straight line edging and not right. an easy not an easy job it could be any pattern right whatever right. it's easy it's still to. not a, it's still not an easy it's not a <clears throat> paint sprayer and it's mm. it's hard it's harder a lot of taping a lot of Right. A lot of edging, but I wouldn't <coughs> mind seeing them in a natural in a in a natural pattern. Looking more of a freeform mural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that was kind of the original idea. I, at least that's what I thought it was. You know, to have you know <coughs> students, you know, do something, and I I don't know. I guess either it wasn't communicated or it got lost or. Well, I, I just just go back one thing though. If you want students to do this, they don't want to do the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the problem. You know, they don't right. want to do that either. You know, so <laughs> yeah. so you're right. gonna get you're gonna get um, what kind of commitment you're gonna get mm -hmm. for doing that. Right. Yeah. The lady who did the Sisler Field was not a student, was she? Yeah. No. No. We, we've gotten so much positive feedback from the Sisler yeah. Field. You know, th that was done well. It was. Um, yeah. And it's gotten a lot of positive response mm -hmm. from the community. I think she I've actually heard. is a student. She might be a college student. Right, I think she's <laughs> a college student. The, uh, but that was a mural project. Right. That came out of our budget as a mural project. Right. Um, the, the solid colors are not a mural cut project. They're right. just painting the building. But anything else should be a mural project. Yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. Exactly. Right. So, so there's, the, there's the thing. I mean, I could see uh, you, know, you want to put a jungle on it, you know, so mm -hmm. it disappears, you know, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. fine, you know, um, but that's, that's a, co that's a mm -hmm. commission, I agree. and it's probably more than a thousand dollars to do yeah, that. Yeah, we have the budget we have to work with under a thousand dollars. Yes, we have the budget we have to work with, for right. it, so, so anyway, um, I'm, I'm, um, I, I'm not married to this thing, I just, Okay, I just, uh, how, do, how do people feel about deferring it? About what? Deferring? Yeah. Bill? Can I get a motion to defer? Lucianne, second? Anybody? A second. I had one more question. Sure. Is there any way to do like a vinyl to where it could? Oh, yeah, you could, but vinyl. that's going to cost more. To do a what? Vinyl. vinyl, the applique oh, like the vinyl. Yeah, and, and it is expensive. Vinyl, you know, who knows what, if, what the book is on vinyl? Right. <laughs> How. How durable it can be on a building that's not prepared for. I mean, over here, yes. the yeah. one that Chris still did, they really worked on that, <coughs> that wall. Oh, yeah. Well, I did a lot of uh, research yeah. with the uh, <laughs> the company uh, Speed Pro that did the uh, crystal applique, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I was hoping that we could use them for the Artist Alley concept, which you know got deep six because of the uh, insurance issues, but. Um, the, the company does everything. They prep the building. They, uh, they photograph the images. You know, they create the, the mural. And uh, it's, it's applied. I know the Chris Still mural, I think, was, what, Diane, two days? It took three days tops? Uh, yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a fast thing, but, you know, the, it's not the cheap. The wall prep took a little longer than that, though. Uh, I think it I, took I a day. I drove by a lot when they were doing it, and I knew they were going to do something, but I they were right. really being careful. Right. So. So would, are we talking like five thousand to do that whole building in vinyl? I don't know. I don't. I don't know what the pricing is. How much did the crystal for still? I th I think the crystal was maybe about five or six a couple of years ago. Hmm. Does that, does that resonate with you, Diane? I don't know, because I wasn't involved in that. Right, because that was a Chamber of Commerce project. I think so that, that was, was more like 11 to 15. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Because I know that uh, Chris donated the image. Right. I mean, so, just the installation. Right, okay. Wow. That's heavy. It's big, That though. is. Yeah. It's huge. Right. Um, but the more recent example we have is... Um, 
the artist who submitted all of the fish motifs, right. his proposal for the golf course. Right. Um, do you remember? It was yeah. Like it was like twelve hundred. Was was it? Can't remember. It was a good bit of money for them. Have we? <coughs> was that? Have we heard from back him? Back in July. No. no. That might be why. <laughs> 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 he finally did some checking. Right. On how much it was going to cost. Mm. I mean, I don't know, but. Mm -hmm. So David, th this seems to have become your baby. Do you want to kind of keep? I mean, I can plug at it and put some other ideas out there, but um, I mean, we're talking about six buildings, correct? Mm -hmm. And if that's a mural project, that's going to be five, about five to ten thousand a building. Mm -hmm. Are we thinking? So, are we willing to go thirty to sixty thousand on six buildings, or is that something we want to wait on? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think you're, you're right about this, and everybody, I think, is thinking along this line.